Did you know that Discord can be used to hack and remotely control computers, eliminating the need for port forwarding or any other applications? This is Zaid from Z Security, and in this video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that. But first, if you're interested in hacking, bug hunting, or cybersecurity in general, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so you get notified every time we upload an educational video like this one. Previously on this channel, I actually covered how to use a service called localhost.run to expose local services to the internet. And as a result, we were able to receive connections from outside of our local network and hack a computer that exists in a completely different country. Also in my courses, I cover how to enable port forwarding to achieve the same goal. And in my latest course, Hacking Using the Cloud, I show how to use the cloud as a command and control server to control the computers that you hack. I also cover how to use existing services such as Discord, and that depends on a tool called Dystopia. Now, Dystopia is created by Dimitris, who is a team member of Z Security. And in this video, you're in for a treat because I actually have the creator of this tool, Dimitris, showing you how to install and configure this tool properly so that we can hack a Windows computer that exists completely outside of our network through Discord. And he's also going to show you how to remotely control this computer, such as executing commands on it, accessing its resources, such as the keyboard and the camera and so much more. So from here, I'm handing it to Dimitris. And guys, if you're enjoying this video, then please like it and share it with friends. That really helps us grow and motivate us to make more videos. Hello everyone, Dimitris from Z Security here. And in this video, I'll be showing you how hackers use Discord to hack Windows computers. Now, generic backdoors have become very easy to detect by even the simplest antivirus programs. That is why hackers are constantly on the lookout for ways to make their backdoors more undetectable. They have found countless ways to hide C2s in plain sight and making backdoors more undetectable by mimicking normal website traffic, using encrypted communication, and many more. This in turn would make the traffic coming and going to the C2 server unnoticeable and harder to catch. Making malware traffic harder to detect has become a necessary step due to how advanced the detection methods have become. For example, we have here a hacker and a target. The hacker has already established a connection to the target, let's say by using a backdoor. When the hacker sends this kind of packet, the packet has a source, a destination and a payload. That source is an IP address which is most likely not trusted by the firewall running on the target machine and also the payload appears to be a command, so the firewall will try to read the payload and see that it is actually something malicious. So most probably, this packet will be dropped and flagged as malicious. Here we have the same scenario as before, but this time the payload is encrypted. This will make it harder for the firewall to detect whether this packet is malicious or not, since it cannot read what the actual contents of the payload is. The only thing that could be used to flag this packet as malicious is the actual IP address which, like we said before, is probably not trusted by the firewall on the target machine. In my personal experience, nothing compares to using legitimate online services like social media platforms as a relay point for your C2 network. What we mean by that is, instead of renting or owning a dedicated server on the cloud, that handles all the communication with the hacked devices, we instead use existing online services like Discord. That's where Dystopia comes into play. In this scenario, we have a hacker machine, a target machine, and in the middle of it all, we have the Discord servers that are going to be used as a relay point for the connection. Here you can see the payload is encrypted, since all the traffic that's coming and going from the Discord servers is encrypted with SSL, and also, the source of the packet is coming from api.discord.com, which is a trusted domain by millions of computers out there. So it gets increasingly more difficult for the target machine's firewall to flag this packet as malicious. So, what is Dystopia? Dystopia is a tool that generates backdoors that use Discord, Telegram and GitHub as a C2 server, so it doesn't require the hacker to own a server to host their listener on. It also has undetectable traffic, since all the packets are HTTPS encrypted. 
which makes the connection made with the C2 server almost unnoticed. And also, it has a lot of client-side attacks, which we will showcase later on. In this video, we will be focusing on how the Discord version of this backdoor works. Let's see a final example of how all of this is done. We have our hacker machine, the target machine, and the Discord servers on the cloud. So instead of owning or renting a dedicated server on the cloud, you can use the existing Discord infrastructure to carry out your attacks. The Discord bot that is running on the target machine is awaiting for commands. The hacker then sends those commands in the form of text messages on the Discord servers, and those messages get routed from the Discord servers to the Discord bot, which is actually the target machine. After receiving and executing the commands on the victim side, an output is generated, which is then sent back to the Discord servers and then eventually reach the attacker in the form of text messages. So similar to how you text a friend on Discord, you can use the Discord bot which is running on the victim's computer to execute malicious commands. Now that we have seen how the tool works, let's see it in action. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is to actually install the tool on Kali Linux. So let's go ahead and do just that. We're gonna first head to the tool repository on GitHub, which is github ictos slash dystopiac2. This link will be included in the description of this video. So in order to install the tool, we need to click here where it says code, copy this link over here. Now let's head to a terminal and type git clone and then paste the link down. That should clone a project to our local machine. And now we have to cd into the directory called dystopiac2. Now that we have cloned the project, we need to run the setup. And in order to do that, we first have to change the permissions of the file and set it to be an executable using this command. And now we can run the setup. It's gonna ask us for the Kali password because this is supposed to run as root. So let's give it the Kali password, which should be Kali by default. And now let's wait for this to install. At some point, you will be asked to install Python 3.8.9, just like here. All you have to do is to click install now and just wait for that to finish. Once this is done, simply press on close so that the installation can continue. As you can see, the installation is done. Now we can move on to the setup. The first thing you're gonna have to do is go to the settings of Discord, then scroll down to advanced and enable developer mode. Once you have that enabled, Let's create your server. Go to add server, click create my own for me and my friends, and I'm just gonna call it server. Now we have a place to chat on with the bot, but we currently don't have anyone on the chat, just ourselves. So let's go ahead and create the bot. So you're gonna have to head to discord.com developers slash applications. This link will also be included in the description of this video and click on new application. I'm gonna call it dystopia. Click here and create. Then you're gonna have to head to bot, scroll a bit down and enable those intents and save the changes. Once this is done, click on OAuth, select bot and then administrator from the second list, copy the link and paste it on your browser. Then you're gonna be prompted with this page. Simply select the server that you just created and continue. Authorize. And if you head back to the server, you'll see that our bot is over here. You're gonna need to have the bot token stored somewhere so that you can use it while generating the backdoor. Go back to the developer portal, click on bot, scroll up and click on reset token. After authenticating yourself, the token will be reset and you will see it over here. You can either copy it like that or click on the button here. Send this to the server so that you don't miss it. Another thing you're gonna have to do is to go to the server settings over here, go to integrations, webhooks, create a webhook, give it another name, I'm gonna call it a keylogger because that's what we're gonna use for the keylogger and set the channel to general. 
save the changes, and we're good to go with that. Now let's generate our backdoor. Go back to Kali and go to your terminal. You're gonna have to run the builder of the tool as sudo. So let's do sudo python3 builder.py. It's gonna ask us for the Kali password, and now we're in. In this video, we're gonna be using a Discord based backdoor. So let's create one. The first thing we're gonna need to do is to say use Discord to use the Discord module. Then you're gonna see that we have to set the backdoor name, guild ID, bot token, channel ID, and keylogger webhook. Let's see the names of the attributes we have to set by using help set, and here are the names of the attributes. Now let's set them. I'm gonna set the name of the backdoor as dystopia. Then move on to the guild ID. The guild ID is basically the server ID, and to get that, right click on the server, and down here you should say copy server ID. If it doesn't say that, that means you forgot to enable developer mode from before. So let's paste that in. Now let's move to the bot token. If you remember, we actually saved the bot token on our chat, so we can simply copy that and paste it down. Now let's do the channel ID. The channel ID is basically the general chat channel ID, and we can simply copy that from here and paste it down. And the last thing we're gonna have to do is to set the webhook URL. And to find the webhook URL, we have to go back to the server, go to the server settings, integrations, webhooks, and click on copy webhook URL. Let's paste this down also, and we are ready to go. To build a backdoor, we simply do build, it should ask us if we really want to build a backdoor, yes or no. We can simply say Y for yes, press enter, and that should start building the backdoor. As you can see, the building process has finished, and we can see a message saying that the backdoor can be found inside the dist directory. So if we ls, we have the dist directory here, and if we do ls inside dist, you'll see the generated backdoor here. Now all we have to do is to basically take this file and send it to our target. Before we execute it, I would like to point out that this backdoor has sandbox evasion enabled by default, which means that it first checks the environment it is running on, and if it detects that the Windows host is a virtual machine, it stops the execution and doesn't initiate the backdoor. This was implemented in order to prevent dynamic analysis of the backdoor to keep it undetectable. So if you go ahead and run this on a VM, it will terminate and not initiate the backdoor functionality. Like we said before, all the communication between me and the target happens in the form of text messages on Discord. You will need to create your own Discord server and add the bot to the server. And from there, you can communicate with the bot. Now let's run it and see it in action. We can see that after getting a connection, the bot sends us a message on Discord letting us know that we have a new agent online. Keep in mind that we can have multiple agents online and control them individually or simultaneously. The message tells us the agent ID, IP address and many more information about the target. Let's say we want to see how many online agents we have currently. To do that, we can run the ls command. And as you can see, we actually have two agents online, as I previously ran the backdoor on another computer. You can see each agent has its own set of commands that perform a different action. Let's say we want to get a screenshot from this agent. All we have to do is simply click the screenshot button, and then it should send us the screenshot as an image. There we go. Now let's say we want to get the saved browser credentials from this agent. Again, let's click the respective button, and here are the credentials saved on the Chrome browser for this target. There are a lot more functions we can use other than those that are available via buttons. To see those, we need to run the help command. 
Here you can see a big list of all the available commands that we can execute on each target. Let's say you want to run a command on a specific target. The first thing you need to do is to interact with that agent, which basically means that you are selecting all the commands you execute to be run by that agent only. To do that, you can either click on the interact button from the ls command result, or by using the slash interact command, followed by the agent id. Now that we have interacted into one of the agents, let's run something from the command line using the cmd command, followed by the command. Let's do dir for directory listing. As you can see again, we get the command result as a text message from that agent. Of course, there are no limits to this as you can run any system command you want to further exploit the target. There is an interesting Excel file on the desktop of this agent, we will have a look at that in a bit. If your target has a webcam, you can even snatch a photo from that. All you have to do is simply run the websod command. As you can see, the bot is telling us to use this command instead, so let's copy that and paste it here. And there we go. As you can see, this also works great. You can even download and upload files to the target simply by running the respective slash download and slash upload command. Remember that Excel file we found from the dir command? Let's try to download it by running the slash download command followed by the full path to the file. So the full path is this one. And then we simply add the name of the file. There we go. Now that we have the file, we can use Excel or a similar application to view the contents of the file. You can also start a keylogger on the target machine using the slash keylog command, which is followed by the mode, which is either start or stop, and the interval which you want the reports to be sent in. So let's put start here, and let's set the interval to 5 for demonstration purposes. So it says the keylogger has started on this agent, and if I go back to this machine and start typing, and then we go back, you'll see the keylogger report coming from this agent. To stop the keylogger, you need to run the slash keylog command again, followed by stop, and you can set the interval to whatever. We're going to set it to 0. And the keylogger has stopped on this agent. Now, what if we want to run commands on all the available agents? All you need to do is instead of running the slash cmd command, we run the slash cmd all command followed by the system command we want to run. For demonstration purposes, let's use the who am I command to show that these targets are not the same. And as you can see, we get two results. One is from a user called Jim's Desktop and one is from Ictos. There are a lot more commands that we can use, but to keep this video short, we're gonna leave them out. I hope you found this video useful, guys.